pleasant good morning church and to all the precious people of Christ. Today I continue my devotion on the topic of repentance and I want to speak especially on a subject that is of great concern to me and that is the whole issue about shame. Now I realize that when you sin you feel ashamed and you ought to. But when you are too ashamed to repent, that is where the problem begins. Maybe you are ashamed to confess your sins before men, and that is quite understandable. Maybe you believe that men would ridicule you, or reproach you, or condemn you, or chastise you, or be disappointed in you. That may or may not be true. However, the question is this. Why would you be ashamed to repent before God? I'm saying to you this morning that God will not ridicule you. God will not um, chastise you. God will not reproach you. God will not um, condemn you. And God will not be disappointed in you. But don't take my word for it. I'll prove it in a while. But I'll tell you something. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, God says, I will be merciful to your unrighteousness and your sins and your iniquities. He says, I will remember them no more. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12. What does that mean? It means that God keeps no record. It means that each time you go before God and repent, to God, it's like the first time. Because the last time you repented, God forgave your sins and he remembers them no more. So every time you go to him to repent, as far as God is concerned, it's like the first time you are coming. I'm saying to you, the only, the only repentance that God rejects is repentance that is not sincere where it is totally outward with words and tears and crying but there is no inward change in your heart or in your mind meaning that you have not changed your mind about the sin you have not made a new decision and you have not changed your belief and you have no inward intention to stop doing what you are doing but you are only repenting for fear of the consequence but you didn't make up your mind to change when god when god realizes this god will not accept that repentance it would be an insincere offering unto God. But however, once you are sincere and no one knows it better than you yourself because your conscience will speak to you. Once your repentance is real, sincere, once your repentance comes from a changed heart and a changed mind and you have all intentions to change your behaviors, God will forgive you. The evidence of this is seen in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And in verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What an incredible promise. I'm encouraging you this morning that you can take God at his word. You can take it to the bank, as I often say. Now, before I close off, let me touch again on the issue of disappointment. <laughs> Many persons believe that when they sin, God is disappointed in them. And you may not want to take my word for it that he's not. But let me give you some proof this morning. Remember, Peter, Jesus said, before the night is over, every one of you shall betray me. Peter responded by saying, Though all men forsake you, never will I forsake you, Lord. Jesus responded to Peter and said, Before the cock crows thrice, you shall deny me twice. So said, so done. Obviously, we all know that Peter was ashamed and Peter felt disappointed in himself. And I am sure Peter was convinced 
that Jesus was disappointed in him. But I see something very interesting in the scripture. In the gospel of Mark chapter 16, after Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible records that Mary Magdalene and the other woman came to Jesus' tomb in search for him. Instead, they found an angel sitting where Jesus laid, and the angel told them, hear what? You seek Jesus? The angel said, he is risen. And then in verse 7, Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 7, the angel said something very informative. The angel told the woman, go tell my disciples and Peter that I go before them in Galilee where they shall meet me. Why did the angel specify and Peter? Well, angels are messengers. It means that that is the exact message he received from Jesus. Jesus knew very well that Peter was disappointed in himself. And Jesus knew that Peter would assume that Jesus was so disappointed in him that Jesus not, would not accept him. So Jesus made it his business to specifically mention Peter's name, to send a message to Peter that, hey, I am not so disappointed in you that I would not accept you. Once you are willing to come back to me, I am willing to accept you again. And that message was not for Peter alone. That message is for all of us today. Listen, you may be feeling guilty and you may be condemning yourself, but I want to encourage you this morning. <laughs> there is no need for you to be so guilty and so much filled with condemnation that you are ashamed to go before God. God will not be disappointed in you, but the Lord is sending a message to you also. And once you are willing to return with, with sincerity, Jesus is willing to accept you just as he accepted Peter. Peter let the Lord down, but Jesus was not let down. I'm saying to you, Jesus knew in advance that Peter would have failed him. And Jesus made up his mind in advance that he would accept Peter again. So your, your, your sins don't really disappoint God because they never catches God by surprise. He knew about it before you did it. And he already made up his mind in advance that he would forgive you and cleanse you with his blood once you are willing to return to him and repent of it. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would give your people confidence that no man would be too ashamed to come before you confessing his, his sins and repenting thereof. Let your people believe and understand your word that if we confess, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And let your people believe again your word. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. Father, I pray your blessing upon your people that they will grow from grace to grace, glory to glory as they constantly confess and repent of their sins and grow to become more and more like you, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. These things I ask, Father, for your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Until we meet again, I encourage you to read 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 to 9 and be blessed. Stay strong in Jesus' name. Amen.